Okie dokie. We're going to solve some right triangles. I'm going to show you some quick, quick up here on the board. Make sure you feel comfortable with this here business. So uh, notice, calculator in degrees. Yes, you can mean degrees, but if you're doing math, make sure you in degrees when you come in here. You reset your calculator, resets the radians, so go to degrees. Second off, we will often talk about right triangles. In fact, what I'd like you to do is see the invisible right triangle, where sometimes there is not actually a triangle. Now, there's some tips here. Triangle geometry needs to solve. You'll check those out as you go. Let's just get to the basics over here. There's a few things. The right triangle has one right angle, of course. The area of a triangle is in your reference table on page five. If you haven't gotten it, you will. Area is one half base times height, of course. Let's see down here. Okay. One of the things I want you to worry about is called the two-point format. So I'm going to show you part of this, and then you're going to do it. So look at question 39. Solve for sides A and C. So A and C. And we're going to do this in a two-point format. So two-point format. Step one. You need your givens. You need what's provided to you. So what's provided to you here, you know that there's an angle, 35 degrees. You know there's a length here that's 8 meters. And let's pick a side we're trying to find. So we're trying to find, let's say we're trying to find side A first, okay? Now, hopefully you remember from the past when you have an angle on a side, you're looking for another side, this is Sokotoa, which you can do from your reference table, page five. Anyway, Sokotoa, if you put yourself at the position of the angle, here it is, 35 degrees, side A is adjacent. The eight meter side is opposite. So this is the adjacent, you should label that. This is the opposite, you should label that. And always across from the right angle is the hypotenuse, you should label that. You should label that so that you don't make a mistake while you're working. So over here, if you list, what do I have? Well, I know my angle is 35 degrees. I know that the adjacent side, that side A, we don't know what that is in meters. Um, we have the opposite side, that's eight meters. And so we're trying to find this adjacent. That's really our question mark. That's our unknown. The equation that we're going to do here when you have an angle, adjacent and opposite, OA, if you go back to your so -ka toa, that's OA and the angle. That's OA and the angle. That's tangent right there. So your equation, part of your step one is put your givens, put the information that's provided to you, and then also put the unsubstituted equation, tan of theta equals opposite over adjacent. That is the unsubstituted equation. And so now, step two, substitute. We've got everything we need. So let's substitute. Here, you could have, uh, what do we know? Tan, 35 degrees, equals opposite is eight meters over the adjacent, we don't know. Maybe we just call that A, because that's what it is. Another step you can take, by the way, not required, but a good idea is actually to rearrange this equation ahead of time. So actually rearrange it to solve for adjacent ahead of time. The way you would do that, this is a cross multiply scenario. You would end up with the adjacent equals opposite over tan theta. And so then when you substitute down here, you would actually be all set. A equals eight meters over tan, 35 degrees. Regardless of how you have it set up, step three, we don't actually need to see the intermediate step. You should do it, but I'm not grading it. Uh, you should actually put it on the paper because I can see if you made a mistake. You just have to solve this. So when you solve this, A equals, you do the math. Let's see, do I have a calculator out handy? Eight meters divided tan 35. Okay, let's try that out. Eight divided. Uh -huh. I got 11.4 meters. The unit here is meter, so 11.4 meters. Good, done. Now, because this is a two sig fig problem, really, this is 11 meters. That's really the proper way to put this. So what I'd like... All right, so we just solved for side A. I know you don't see it up here. This is actually the new version written in, but what we had found for side A, our step three down here, was we got it to be 11.4 before we did sig figs and then applying sig figs, which is the correct thing to do. We got our magnitude or our answer to be 11 meters. All right, fine. Next question, solve for side C. 
So there are a couple options for side C. You could do Sokotoa again. And if you were to do Sokotoa again, again, you know, we've got our angle. This, of course, is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is across from the 90, opposite the 90. This, of course, is the opposite and the adjacent. And so if we look at Sokotoa, we can use, when we do know A, we do know A now is 11 meters. However, we also know that that's a, a rounded magnitude. And so probably the best choice, if we were going to do Sokotoa, would involve this 8 meters, and that's the opposite, along with C, the unknown, that's the hypotenuse, and OH goes with SO. So this would be a sine of 35 degrees equals opposite, which is 8 meters, divided by hypotenuse, which is C, unknown. However, I'm going to show you a different way to do this, just so you get familiar with the two-point format. The other way we can do this is with Pythagorean's theorem. It's a right triangle, so we can instead do, let's write out our givens here, our step one again. We can do, well, what do we have here? Well, we know our angle is 35 degrees. We know that side A, maybe we can call this A, B, and C. Those are minuscule or lowercase letters there. So side A, we know is a rounded 11 meters. Side B, we know is 8.0 meters. And side C is our unknown. That's what we're trying to find. And so I recommend you put a little question mark there for yourself. It will also come out in meters. So we need an equation that will solve this. We don't need to use all of these givens. In fact, we can do this with just a, b, and c. The equation is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Pythagorean's theorem, which is, by the way, in your reference table. Probably have it memorized by now, given all of your life experience. But uh, you could find that on PRT5, the little geometry section there. That's supposed to be a 2. All right. Step two, you want to substitute. And so in this case, when we substitute, we know our A is 11 meters. So 11 meters. The entire quantity is squared. Be careful here now. It's not just the 11 that's squared. It's actually 11 meters that's squared. 11 by itself, as you've come to learn, doesn't mean anything. So 11 meters represents a length here. Plus 8 meters squared equals c squared. Now, like we said before, perhaps a sensible thing for you to do, which actually I do recommend, is first rearrange this so that you're solving for what the question is querying, the c, in which case you would square root both sides. We practiced that on the algebra page, algebraic sentences, and you would have c is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now, yes, in math class, they've taught you that numerically, this could be positive or negative. However, in physics, it's okay now. I know, listen, we're just doing math review, but it's okay for you to start to apply your thinking to your math. C represents a length. And in this particular case, a negative length has no meaning. So it's only gonna be the positive square root here that matters. All right, anyway, when we plug this in, if you were to plug in the, the rearranged version, our substituted equation, of course, would be just like before, except it's already in plug-in form for your calculator. Okay. Now, next step, you can show your intermediate steps. You can do your 11 squared is 121. You can do your 8 squared is 64. But uh, the only thing that I'm grading is the answer. So I'm going to leave some space here because I'm going to talk to you about those other steps for just a moment. In just a moment. But basically, C comes out to, no matter which way you do it, give me a second here. So I'll do a little something in my head, which is not a bad thing. Here is this reasonable 121 plus 64. What's that? That's uh, 185. So 185 square rooted gives you 13.6 meters. And of course, to sig figs, that would give us 14 meters. 
Now, there is a little bit of room for debate here, and let me just clear all that up. First and foremost, um, if you want to do the next line of math, sometimes people try to be real smart. Oh, I know 11 squared. I don't need to write 11 squared. I can just do what it is. Sure, it's 121, but the meters are also squared. So this is equivalent to 121 meters squared plus 64 meters squared, okay? And actually, if you're really being fussy about it, which uh, you don't need to in this course, you might even try to take this guy to 120 for sig figs. But there's a general rule for sig figs, and that is don't do that. The rule is take it another step, another decimal place or another place value further slash farther than the answer requires. So if this is two sig figs, this is an intermediate step, make it three sig figs. With that in mind, you might then argue, well, wait a minute. The 11 squared plus 8 squared is really an intermediate step to getting the answer. And if that's the case, shouldn't this 11 then carry an extra sig fig and make it 11.4? Actually, I couldn't argue with that. You know, we would have to look at the context in order to determine whether that is completely correct, but I couldn't argue with that. So if you wanted to put in 11.4 meters squared, you could go ahead and do that, and that would be all right. So you could do it just like this. And get your answer. All right, so just to check out what this would give us, uh, in this case, if you had chosen to plug in 11.4 meters squared, let's see what would it come out to. 11.4 squared plus the same 8 squared. It's going to give you the square root of 193.96. That one actually comes out to 13.93, which, as it turns out, also rounds two sig figs to 14 meters. So it's nice it worked out in this case. No matter how you slice this, it works. More than one way to skin a cat here. However, it doesn't mean it always works. Sometimes this sort of scenario will actually lead you to a slightly different result, maybe 13 rather than 14 meters. In this course, as long as you show what numbers you're plugging in, follow the math, you're okay. We don't penalize you for that sort of thing. All right, let's look at a couple more questions down here. Solve for side x and for angle theta. Okay, so let's start with side x. We have two sides over here, so this makes it easier for us. Now, some of you may recognize, oh, it's a little big. There we go. Oh, I see it. A three, four, five triangle times 10. Yes, are you allowed to see that? Absolutely. However, and by the way, if you see that it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle times 10, you can then jump to the conclusion that x must equal 40 meters. But if you're asked to show your work, and don't worry, you will know what that means as the course goes on. If you're asked to show your work, what we call this two-point format, that won't be an option. In that case, you would have to do something like A, B, and C. You would come over here and you'd make your list. A is X. B is 30 meters. A is really X meters. And C is 50 meters. And you would have to do your equation. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And since this is all review, we don't need to run through every step of it. Uh, it is the exact same process as we just followed right here. Instead, you're substituting 30. Well, I'll show that substitution just in case. In this case, you are going to have, if we rearrange it, and I do like rearranging it. So though it is not the law, I will recommend it. We are solving for A. So A is going to be the square root of C squared minus B squared. 
So all of this, by the way, is what we called up top our step one. Our step two, we substituted. And in this case, you know, you can run your numbers in here. And that's going to be 50 meters squared minus 30 meters squared. And you know that ultimately you're going to get 40 meters, which is an answer you need to write out. Okay, just beware when using Pythagorean's theorem. The two legs are on the left, or on one side, doesn't matter left or right, and the long side, the hypotenuse, is going to be on the other side. Okay, so that's really our, our step three is kind of this answer up here. All right, good. Now you have to find theta. You can find the angle. So let's straighten that out. Here's the angle. We got choices here. Now remember, Across from the angle, that's the opposite side. Next to the angle, that's the adjacent side. And of course, across from the 90, this is supposed to be a 90 degree angle right here. That's the hypotenuse. Okay, good. <clears throat> so what do we wanna solve? Well, we know 30, we know 40 down here, and we know 50 up top. Uh, we're quite certain that all three of these are correctly uh, demonstrated. But again, not a bad habit. Pick the two that have been provided to you. So that's opposite and hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse, well, here we can have our opposite. If we're going to be thorough about this, opposite is 30 meters. By the way, you know, some of you may be watching this video and saying, oh boy, I have to, I have to catch up on this. Well, the fact that you're seeing the true process of presenting the work here is actually going to put you at an advantage. So this is a nice setup to how the year is going to work out. So uh, don't feel bad if you're going and reviewing things that, oh yeah, I should know this. Well, yeah, you should know it, but that's why there's a review because sometimes over the summer, things fly away. And then we're gonna, we're gonna reel them back in like a homing pigeon, here they come. All right, we're trying to find our angle. And as usual, our angles are in this course will always be done in degrees. So some amount of degrees. Now, because opposite and hypotenuse were given to you already, that's the opposite. That's a hypotenuse. When it comes to doing your so katoa, I'm going to recommend that you use so. The one with the opposite and hypotenuse, you're going to use sine. So also as part one, you need your equation. The equation is sine theta. This is an unsubstituted equation. Equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now we did this exact scenario up above. Let's see up here you followed this scenario however there's a slight difference here i gave you the angle up for this one and down here i'm asking for the angle so let's run through it that's going to give you a little bit of a, a different feel for the math this by the way is if you've been doing the appendices in order yes we've already covered this scenario and so just reinforcement nothing wrong with that so here what many people will do is they'll start plugging in sine theta equals opposite is 30 meters over hypotenuse is 50 meters. Okay. Now, if we're going to follow what I've been recommending, I'm recommending actually that you rearrange this ahead of time, solve it for theta. And we did this in the algebraic sentences appendix, this previous appendix. So you would have to inverse sign both sides. So the inverse sign of keep that color coding sine theta inverse sine is the way you undo sine if this is unfamiliar to you go back to the algebra section equals now you're going to do the inverse sine of opposite over hypotenuse that's your that's your full substituted version so i'm just going to put o over a save us a little writing time and so if you were to substitute this one in, instead what it would look like, this inverse sine and the sine cancel each other. So you're just going to have a theta equals inverse sine of that same 30 meters over 50 meters. All right. And so when you do this process, in your calculator, you can actually do this on your phone calculator. It works out just fine. 30 over 50, you're allowed to know is 0.6. 
then second function sine actually works the same on your calculator on your phone you just have to put in the fraction first then do the second function sign anyway step three gives us our answer and the angle here is 36 my calculator says 36 point let's say nine degrees which many of you appropriately or semi-appropriately would round to 37 degrees. The truth is, if these are really 30, 40, 50, if you watch the big, big section, you can't tell actually, this didn't even get mad at me, but you can't actually tell if this is one or two sig figs. So assuming these are two sig figs, that's a good answer. If they're actually one sig fig, then the best answer you can come up with is 40 degrees. Again, you don't get penalized for that in this course, and the context of the problem would help you decide whether this or this is really an appropriate answer. All right, cool. Here we go. Last piece is determining, determining whether, not whether, but determining the areas. So simple thing. Uh, you should know by now, if you don't know, go look at your reference table, but there are certain things that really should be memorized. And uh, you should know the area of a triangle. So knowing the equation that you're going to use actually makes your life a little easier at times. You don't have to know it ahead of time. But in this case, knowing that the area of a triangle is one half base times height actually makes your life a little nice because when you're setting up your givens here, you already know what you need to write. You want the base and you want the height. So from this triangle up here from 6.1, the base here would be the adjacent. And so that one was, here I'll put B for base, was 11 meters, although we went through the problem and we said this could also be correctly and appropriately considered 11.4 meters. And we'll talk about that as we plug in. The height was eight meters and we're asking for an actual physical area. And so the area is some unknown and it's some unknown number of meters squared. Okay. So just to make our lives easier, I'm going to, I know you don't have this option, but I definitely write more slowly in here than you write on your paper. We can do the other side, except this one is base of 40 and a height of 30. So let's straighten that out. Base of 40 meters and a height of 30 meters. So 40 meters and 30 meters. Okay, good. And so then when it comes time to plugging these in, not particularly tricky. You've done this many a time. So area equals one half. Now you can have your 11 meters times height, which is eight meters. So let's see if that 11.4 makes a difference this time. And I'll color code that down here. We could instead put an 11.4 in here and we would be justified based on what I've provided you. Over the other side, same game plan, except now it's 30 and 40. Okay, so these numbers you can probably do in your head. So the area of the first triangle, I know I'm writing and talking about two different triangles, but that's all right. First triangle is half of 11 times eight. So you can apply that half to the eight. So half of eight is four and four times 11 is 44 meters, except it's not meters because it's meters times meters. So there's my mistake, it's meters squared. In this case, it's pretty similar. Half of 40 will give you 20. 20 times 30 is 600 meters squared. Okay, fine. These, by the way, are, I know it seems very thorough, but these are two-point format. And don't think of it as, as a way to lose points. Think of it as a way to gain points. You get two points for just setting this up neatly. If you set this up with the 11.4, uh, you can do this in your head, by the way. So this was basically 11 times 4, the half applied to the 8. Uh, it's the same thing, 11.4 times 4. So 11 times 4 gave you 44. 0.4 times 4, 4 times 4 is 16. You get the decimal back in, you get a 1.6. 1.6 1 
that comes out to 45.6 meters squared. And you could leave it like that, or if you put this to two sig figs, you would get 46 meters squared. Notice these are definitely different looking answers. However, based on the information I've given you, credit, credit, credit. This one is kind of the least worthy just because the sig figs are off. But all of these would get credit in this course. You would need more context. And that's part of science. You know, that's where science and math diverge a bit. Science is really a little messy. You got to know the context. You can't just take the numbers and bring them across the world, know nothing about how they were measured, and run it and say, ah, there's the answer. It's not that simple. All right, then.